This is your Tech News Briefing for Tuesday, September 20th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Washington and Beijing are at odds over a number of issues, including the development of advanced technologies. But despite those tensions, this year is on track to be one of the strongest years for investment flowing from China to Silicon Valley. A new report shows Chinese investment in U.S. venture capital and private equity funds is on pace to reach around $880 million this year. That would be the second highest it's been in more than a decade, and it's raising concerns among U.S. officials. So what's driving the flow of cash, and how might the U.S. react? Here to discuss this is our venture capital reporter, Heather Somerville. Hi, Heather. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Zoe, glad to be with you. So huge sums of money are coming in to the U.S. from Chinese investors. Who are the investors behind all this funding, and why is there such interest in pouring money into Silicon Valley now? Well, there has been interest for many years, and the investors on the China end are a range of investors. Some are private individuals looking to make a few bucks on U.S. startups. Some are Chinese government entities, government-guided funds, Chinese corporations. It really does run the gamut. On the one hand, I think there's plenty of investors who are interested purely in a financial return. U.S. tech has been a good place to make money for some time now. And U.S. venture capital firms that are taking this Chinese money have often performed very well over the last many years. But I think the point of writing about this now is that there is tremendous concern from the national security community, government officials across agencies, national security analysts, and people who work on investment security, that these sorts of investments offer the Chinese ample opportunity for a range of things that the U.S. government really doesn't want to happen. That can include overt IP theft from U.S. startups. And it can include something that seems a little bit more benign, but is also a national security concern. And that is the Chinese government gaining insight as into how U.S. startups are formed, how they're built, how they scale, how they end up being successful. Chinese investors who put money into a bunch of different companies in a particular sector, whether that's AI, whether that's semiconductors, can get this aggregated view of how a sector is developing in the United States. And this is what has alarmed the Biden administration and national security officials. So there are a couple points I want to break down there. First off, how do U.S. government officials decide who's just here to make money and who is maybe looking for more information on U.S. tech or insight on how the companies are run? Zoe, I don't think they know the answer to that question. (laughs) I think that's part of the problem. That's part of the challenge. And in talking to government officials who work on this, they were very explicit that they have a huge blind spot in identifying who are the limited partners. Limited partners is the term we use for the investors who put money into these venture capital funds because they aren't disclosed. They're not press releases about them. They're really hard to identify, often intentionally shrouded behind multiple funds. um, So their identity is concealed. Let's talk a bit about the report. Who was behind it and what was their goal? The report was authored by two researchers who have specialized in Chinese geopolitical and economic strategy, and they have a a small consulting firm in the D.C. area. And their report was published through the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, which is a conservative-leaning think tank in D.C. that does publish work on a range of issues, including China issues. And I think that they were trying to get like some type of top line number to raise attention to the volume of money that is still coming from China into U.S. venture capital firms, in spite of what one would think are a lot of reasons for that investment not to happen. Have the funds that were named in this report or any of the companies that have received the money commented about this? Yes. So you can put them into different groups. There's the big funds that people who know Silicon Valley will know very well, Sequoia Capital, Lightspeed Venture Partners, and they have China affiliates who have a ton of Chinese government money and Chinese corporate money. And their comments are that their China unit is totally separate 
from their U.S. operations. If you talk to some of the smaller firms, their position is, well, Chinese capital is just a really tiny fraction of their fund, you know, 1%, 5%, something like that. I will say, though, in speaking to government officials for this story, something that they brought up was they don't actually care how much Chinese money it is. They don't actually care about the dollar amount. What they care about is what comes with that investment. Do these limited partners want quarterly meetings with the startups? Do they want access to technology information? Like what else is wrapped up in that relationship? And also, do they have particular influence over the venture capital partners who are deploying the capital? And this is something that the Biden administration is really focusing on, in part through an executive order that came last week that tried to refocus CFIUS's efforts to identify potential investment threats that involved sensitive U.S. technologies. And CFIUS, just so listeners know, is the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States. It's a panel of interagency representatives who are in charge of reviewing foreign money coming into U.S. companies. So Heather, for U.S. tech companies and for startups who might be receiving this money, what should they be looking at going forward? Or should they be concerned at all? I think, unfortunately, there's only so much that entrepreneurs can do. I think they should start by asking the venture capital firms that they're in conversations with about fundraising who their limited partners are. I don't know if they'll get a straight answer is the challenge. I don't know if they'll get the information that they need or they want to make a decision. But I just think in general, awareness for entrepreneurs that where they source the money is really important to their long-term success in the security and the prosperity of the company that they're building. All right, that's our reporter, Heather Somerville. Thanks for joining us, Heather. Thanks, Zoe. And that's it for today's Tech News Briefing. If you want more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.